Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a little bit of a last minute video. I just saw my friend Katie Marie announcing and reminding us all that the Colored Rain Safari Rain palette is coming back and it's going to be back in stock for a limited uh, amount and a limited time therefore on the 12th of June and uh, I thought as she did her review and three looks that I would do something according to what my thoughts are on this palette but please do go check out Kitty Marie's video I will leave it leave it linked down below she is also the one who gave me the idea for the combination of shimmers on this eye look she did something similar and I thought it was very pretty so I want to give her the credit for that because that's where I got my idea uh, in this video, I am going to be uh, talking to you briefly about the palette. You've heard me talk about this more often. I've ha had a get ready with me with it. I uh, it went through a few declutters and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my feelings on the palette. Then we're going to do a quick tutorial on this eye look and then we're going to depot it. Yes, I asked you on Instagram months ago at this point um if you'd like to or, or what i should i do should i declutter the palette should i depot it and all of you told me depot it and the reason is the following this eyeshadow palette has a very beautiful color scheme you have your very warm tone up here you have a line of greens two more yellow mustardy greens and then or like military olive greens and then one teal and then you have a row of neutral down here um with a, a very bright gold a yeah beautiful gorgeous mid-toned brown shimmer that i'm wearing also today and this very dark brown matte i think the palette had so much potential. I purchased mine from Color Drain website um, during a sale months ago, if not a year ago even. And um, I purchased it on a sale and I paid 15 euros for the palette or $15 for a palette plus $15 for shipping, which uh, totaled for me that I didn't have to pay for customs because the value of the product was low. and. Uh, it meant that the total price was less than what it used to retail for on Beauty Bay that was 35 or more euros at the time. Um, then this palette sold out because it was limited edition and then uh, Color Drain decided to bring it back. Now back to my feelings on this palette, we've talked about the palette. Um, I love the color scheme, I love the shimmers so much, but the mattes have been a disappointment and specifically this um, teal green is not a good formula i cannot use this i've tried i've tried on uh, uh, instagram live i've tried on um, on my personal time in my life and every time i use this shade it was such a dud that i had to go in with any other teal i had in my collection to fix it because it wouldn't blend properly it wouldn't layer so for this shade it kind of poisoned me to the rest of the palette. Then the I find that the this very warm orangey uh, earth shade is uh, working fine, but it's nothing special. I don't think the matte formula is that ex um, excellent. This shade right here is what I'm wearing in the um, crease right now. And as I'll tell you again in uh, the tutorial, I remembered not liking this, but it applied quite well. It's not super uniform as I'd like it to be. Um, I think you can, it's almost a little bit opaque, uh, translucent so that you can see my skin and then it doesn't look fantastic on the eye, but it blended well. And I actually was looking for a dupe for it and I don't have one. So um, this shade is, is okay. Uh, this one is just not okay. This matte right here, Matriarch, the dark brown is a beautiful, very well thought um, shade of brown. I'm trying to not blind you because the packaging is a reflective gold. So um, it's a beautiful dark brown, perfect for deepening the, cre the, the, the outer corner. It works very well. You can really see that someone with a deeper complexion has set up this palette because all the colors work very well for, um, yeah, with a deeper skin tone. And this dark shade is a show of it because I'm, 
I, not as a, a person of color, I am fed up with um, palettes that don't have deep enough shades. I just don't buy them anymore. So this one checked my boxes. Let's talk about the shimmers. Amazon Basin, as I said, is my favorite shade of them all. I am wearing it on the um, outer part of my eye, but I want to swatch it for you because it looks very cool toned in the pan, but you can see that it's this beautiful multi-dimensional neutral brown shimmer. It's just for this shade. I don't want to um, declutter the palette and I don't want to give it away. Another very pretty shade is Green Valley, the green shimmer, and it's this shade right here. I'm also wearing that on the inner part of my eye, and it's a bit more yellow toned, but I feel like this type of shade you might actually have. And I'm thinking specifically of Citron by Nabla, which is this shade right here, which is maybe a little bit, has a bit less of the green undertone, but it has a similar shift. Maybe I'll manage to swatch it better. The quality of these shimmers uh, by Color Drain is fantastic. They're very, very emollient. They work very, very well, up to a fault. One of the shades, especially this one right here, Lioness, is very flaky. So it's very difficult to apply. You can see I just swirled once and you can see how much chunkiness came up. And on your eye, it will be um, quite chunky and you have to make sure you apply a very small amount and um, blend it out well. You can see how very little goes a very long way. So if you apply this all over your lid, I think you can get a better effect than how I've been trying to use it this whole time, which is putting it in my inner corner. And um, it's just a very, very emollient formula, more than the others, and uh, it's a bit tricky to use with a brush. In a similar formula, but not as bad, is the shade Tigress, which is this beautiful, fiery orangey red gorgeous i have a hard time finding a t place and a time to use it but it's beautiful and then toucan is much more user friendly and it is this beautiful very warm orangey shimmer so the shimmers in this palette i feel are worth getting the palette i think you can definitely find other things um, other mattes that work better, better formulas, but the shimmers here, this guy right here is unique to a point that I couldn't find a dupe for. I think these, this beautiful um, red is also very unique. So if you like the color scheme and you don't mind one dud, um, this could be a palette for you. When it comes to me though, I never reach for this palette because the thought of it gives me a negative impression because every time I try to reach for that steel, because I want, I love teals, I feel extremely disappointed and I have to redo my eye makeup and everything's ruined. So it's a bit of a bitter feeling for me. So I prefer to depot it. But before we go there, um, let, but before we go depotting, let's get into the tutorial for this eye makeup and then we'll depot the palette. I am starting out with the shade Congo Basin in my crease and just applying it directly on my primed eye. As you can see, actually, I should smoothen it out. And I actually today was quite surprised at how much I did not hate this. Um, this shade. I remember not liking it at all, but probably it was actually the other teal that I remembered. So we're gonna save this shade because I think it applies quite nicely, especially with this fluffy brush. Um, maybe I was applying it with a thicker brush previously, but uh, I think I was just mistaken in my dislike. I just keep applying more in the thickest part of my it's thickest in the deepest part of my crease and then blending it out. With a small pencil brush I'm gonna take Matriarch and apply it on the outer corner of my eye and start blending it into the crease and the outer V and that is to give depth. I think the choice of colors for this palette especially in this dark brown was very very good. Um, it's a very versatile eyeshadow and it's definitely deep and here you can really see 
someone who has deeper skin and needs a shade that will deepen appropriately the eyeshadow look which I love by the way and this actually is a super easy first step of the look I'm gonna go in with the shimmers I'm starting with Amazon basing which is a beautiful beautiful cool tone shade and it's so multi-dimensional and my favorite shade in this palette I've raved about this before when I've talked about this palette I'm just gonna place it in the center and outer part of my eye I pulled up a bit too much from the brush and I had a little bit of fallout so I'm just gonna dust it off on the other side of my brush I'm picking up Green Valley all of these shimmers are being applied dry and my base is not particularly tacky so you can really see how beautiful the effect is of these shimmers and why I would definitely recommend them if they are shades that you are interested in especially this first shade right here outside it's like it looks so cool toned in the pan but it looks so beautiful on the eyes I'm bringing a little bit of that green valley in the inner part of my lower lash line and my inner corner and then I'm taking basin in the center of my lower lash line I'm pretty much recreating what I did on top then to deeper the outer part I'm taking Nabla Cupid's bow which you've heard me rave about now since I got it on the top lash line and the bottom lash line and inner waterline insisting specifically on the outer part of course and then with a little smudger brush just making sure I have no harsh lines and everything looks blended and this is possibly one of the easiest eye looks ever I, I do understand that there's multiple shimmers for example and two different uh, mattes but I find it so easy to do it's really high impact I'm gonna apply my mascara primer and mascara <laughs> and here is the finished look using the Safari Rain palette and it's probably the last time we will see the palette in a whole form let's get into the depotting part of this video here we are depotting the palette and uh, I want to bring your attention to how this palette is constructed um, this is a cardboard packaging that has a uh, housing for the uh, eyeshadows in this piece and then has hard cardboard as a closure so this this colorful part is the hard cardboard with the stickers on the back so the best way to go about um, depotting this is actually to start by removing this outer uh, piece the place where all of the uh, eyeshadows are and my apologies if you don't see very much but I can't do it from this side because I'm left-handed so <laughs> I work with my left hand and therefore as you can see I am taking um didn't show you this is my husband from when he was in school it's just a blade and I'm just pushing it in and lifting the glue that keeps the palette together this might take a bit of force in a few spots but uh, usually it is quite um, painless let's say and you can see that the palette just comes off it was only glued in the middle and here is the empty one I know this because I already depotted the Vivid Pigments palette for, by Colored Rain and it was in the same format. I'm gonna put down a tissue so that the shadows don't um, like leave too much dust on my um, plastic cover which anyways like this is a plastic cover on top of my desk. Ikea does these and it's fantastic for us makeup lover. And then you can see the back of the palette right here it's cardboard with this nice um, foiled paper on top. I'm gonna work at removing this foiled paper. A 
Okay, I'm a klutz and I actually stuck my uh, spatula in a shade, but nevertheless, now that we have the edges off, you can see, I hope, how this palette is constructed. So now we have two pieces of cardboard next on top of each other, and those are sandwiching the shadows. So I am going to try to separate them. And there were two tiny dots of glue on this side. And here we have the pans. Something nice to see is that this is where the uh, magnets are housed for the closure of the pallets. And uh, what is important is that you, what is important is that you remember the names of the shadows. So I'm gonna keep this out to remember what shades um, are what and call them properly. I will be using some uh, little labels that I will write down the names of the um, shadows so that I don't get them wrong, making sure that the palette is in the right direction <laughs> and just writing down the shade names. Now that I have the names out, I'm gonna start by removing these pans from this cardboard um, pan, uh, like cardboard support. And these should have only a dot of glue, but you want to go extremely, extremely gentle because you may crack the pans. And I'm gonna start by the shade that I like the least, which is the shade The Jungle, and just with my little blade go underneath and I can hear that it comes up really easily, which is great. It's not that the glue is not strong, but the cardboard will delaminate and uh, come off. Now, I would like these shades not to have the cardboard or the glue underneath. And you can uh, remove them gently with your fingers or with your nails, or what you can do is soak them in acetone for a little bit with a, a cloth or something um, and that will dissolve the glue and help um, the, um, the pan be clean. And this glue just came off by itself so this shade is ready to be tagged and this is the shade Amazon Basin. Ooh, see I already set them wrong <laughs> and I'll just put the little label on the back. If there's any corners coming off I will be cutting them off just so that I don't see them in the magnetic palette. And you guys compared to the Morphe 35M that I depotted last time. This is a breeze. I love having to deal with and depotting um, palettes that are cardboard in the back. It makes it so much easier. Here we go. This was the last little bit. We have the top part that was on there and uh, the packaging. There we go. These would be good uh, tools and extra bits for those who want to make their own eyeshadow pans. Uh, just add a, uh, or eyeshadow palette, just add a magnetic uh, backing here and probably cut some cardboard for uh, height and then you would be good to go. This is a beautiful packaging with a really nice mirror. So I'm actually gonna wait on uh, throwing it away. But what is more important now is to get these bad boys um, into their place. So I have two of them that are already tagged and the other ones I have to remove the glue from. I have here an old towel, uh, one that I use for um, also cleaning my brushes and such, and some acetone in a um, just glass bottle. I am lucky that uh, I have access to a chemistry lab where these uh, chemicals are easy to get a hold on. 
and uh, what I do is just uh, rub the acetone on the back and keep holding it on. If you have nail polish, this will remove your nail polish, by the way, hence why my nails are bare. Um, and just keep it on until the glue either comes off easier or um, just is, is soft enough to scrape off. Sometimes a spatula could help. What you can also do is use heat. So that would also work in this context to do the same thing. But I'm always wary with heat because it sometimes um, you know, warps the pan. But, um, and also I don't have, uh, and also I don't have straighteners. Okay, here we have it. We have all of the shades with their little labels on the back. The packaging is in pieces. This would make a really nice palette, as I said, but I will not be doing that. I actually was just chatting with the repanning community uh, Repan Revolution uh, group uh, on Instagram about this project that I was doing and um, Marta's Makeup is her name on Instagram. She suggested to, even when the palette is closed, just use a spatula and a needle to pull out the shades. You can definitely do that. When I was doing that with my uh, Vivid Pigments, I heard a bit of a crack, so be careful not to twist um, not to twist the pans in there, but it's possibly much easier to do it than the way I did it, even though Honestly, this is one of the easiest depotting that I have ever done. And uh, I just needed a little cutter or a spatula will work. A pair of small scissors will also work. And uh, this is the end of it. These uh, eyeshadows now will go in my color coordinated um, magnetic palettes like this one, except for this shade right here, Jungle, which I don't like and will be going into my declutter palette and probably a gift to whoever wants it and buy something from me. But the other shades, especially um, these two beautiful neutrals, are definitely going into my palettes. And we can actually start uh, with the easy ones, which are the greens. And you can see there is nothing really similar to these two shades in this palette and I'm very happy about that. So here we go, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out Katie Marie's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.